Hi guys and welcome back. So for today's video we're doing brass prep. In the reloading series I've done in the past I did mention that I'll do a brass prep video for you guys so you guys can see what the process is and what you need. If you haven't gone around to the reloading series I'll put a tab in the right top screen for you guys so it'll take you there and you can look at the five steps. So for today's video brass prep what do you need what tools do you require and what is the process? So let's start with what tools are required. So except for your new brass, you require a vernier or a digital caliper. You can do analog. Digital just makes it a slight bit easier. Your die set, which die set you're going to be using, your case trimmer, and your chamfer and deburr tool. And that is what you need. So guys, this is the equipment that I'll use. I'll list it in the description below. But this is just my preference. You can use any other specific brand this is just what i chose to go with so what the process is so if you buy new brass and it depends on what type of brass you buy if you buy the more expensive brass like peterson or alpha munitions they come in a separate box which separates the brass and they come one one in a box those brass don't tend to have so many deformities or aches if i can say it like that where if you buy your brass that comes in a bag or in a box during the transport system or during the transportation process, they actually knock and ding against each other. So before we do anything else, we want to make sure that the case mouth is nice and round before we start any prep work. With that being said, this is where we'll start. We'll take your new brass and run it through your die. I'll just tell you what my system is. And yours doesn't have to be exactly the same. It's just, as I said, this is what I use. So if you, there's two options, you can do the mandrel, which is an extra step, or you can do the expander mandrel ball that's inside of the die. So you run it through your die, mine is now doing the full length on the 308, and once I'm done there, I mandrel. So that's the first step. And the main reason to do that is to get the case mouth nice and round, ready to be trimmed and chamfered and deburred. So it's a very important step because we round the case mouths. So once that's done, we do the most time consuming part of this process and it's measuring each, each piece of brass. So I bought a pack of 100 and now I will go and measure brass piece number one all the way to brass piece number 100. And I'll take this data, punch it onto an Excel spreadsheet and get an average case length. And this is where I decide what to cut my case length at or to trim it. So once I got the average, I set up my trimming device and I trim all the brass. Now, as you'll see later on, some of the brass are shorter than the average and other brass are longer than the average. So the ones that's longer than the average, those are the ones we're going to be trimming and the others we won't touch at all. So it's just a gamble we do. That's how I've been doing it for, the, for all my life. Brass has, has a tendency to stretch once it's been shot. So the ones that's short will come up to the average. And every five or six reloads, you'll retrim the brass. And that's how you'll, over time, get everybody to the average. So once you've trimmed the brass, and as I said, I'll run you through the process. I'll do it on that uh, Frankfurt Arsenal. And then the next step after the trimming is basically chamfer and deburr. Now, this is important because once you trim the brass, it has sharp edges. Now, there's two sides of this. You don't want any sharp edges on a brass piece to go into your chamber you also don't want the sharp edges to cut the bullet that you're putting inside the case mouth because that'll affect your bc so it's very important to chamfer and deburr correctly so that it's a smooth intake into the mouth not only for the bullet but also for your chamber all right and guys that's the process as a summary or in short new brass into the die mandrel to just make sure that the case mouth is nice and round. From there, we'll measure, we'll get the average. Once the average has been determined, we then trim. Once the trimming has been done, we chamfer and deburr all the bras. Guys, those are the steps. So let me run you through this process. I'll take one piece of brass and I'll run you through the whole process in detail, nice and close up. All right, guys, for the close up video, so here I've got my Hornady Classic Press. It was a classic lock and load press. I've got my two dies at the back, right-hand side die, 
is my normal reading type S die. And on the table here, I've got my expandable wall that could go in the inside, whether I choose to or not. And on the left hand side, I've got the expander mandrel, which I use. All right, so as I said in the video, I'm doing a full sizing on the brass. I'm using felt case lube. All right, so we'll take a little bit of the case lube. We'll just put it on the brass just so we know that it goes in nice there. All right, nice feature about the lock and load press. The turrets just lock in and we'll just run it through the die. All right, so I'll see if I can show you guys what it's done. If there was any informities on the case mouth, it'll be now nice and round. There we go. It's now full sized and the bushing that I got inside has now done its work. All right. And now I just do the mandrel. Same system, just run it through the mandrel. There you go. Nice fit. And there we have it. Your brass is now full sized. The case mouth, if there was any informities or impurities, is now out. It is now perfectly round and perfect. On to the next step. All right, guys, on to the measuring of the case lengths. So I'll just do a few just to guys show you guys that there is a difference between the brass. So I'll take this, this is the brass that we've run through the die. So everything else I'll just put to the left. Your vernier, make sure that you do zero it. And it is on millimeters. That's the final measurement. Okay, 550, 70 is all one there. And I'll just go 69. Seventy-six. There's a nice long one that'll definitely be trimmed. Eighty-one. Let's put it on that side, and so on. So you just take your bull brass and you measure it each step to get the length. So as I said, you'll put this onto an Excel spreadsheet and then get your average case length. All right, so I quickly just ran about 40 pieces of brass onto the Excel spreadsheet and 50.69 was the average. So this doesn't really need trimming, but we did see that there was a few pieces of brass at 50.80 and 50.82. So those will definitely be trimmed. So I'll use my trimming device. This is the trimming device from Franklin. You can see there's a little bit of brass still in there. And it is set up for a 308. It's got different inlets and different tighteners. And then you attach this piece to a drill. And it basically spins onto the pieces that cut it on the inside. So however you choose to trim your brass, this one is the one we selected won't be trimmed. But I'll just show you how it will work. We'll punch it in there. And if you can see on the inside there, it will be cut by... The blades at the end once we spin it onto the drill so fortunately for us we don't have to trim this one but it's also good so i can show you what you do with a piece of brass that is not trimmed all right so once the trimming is done then we get to the chamfer and deburr tool all right and you chamfer on the inside or chamfer deburr not really sure which one goes where i just know that's the tool's name all right and let's see if i can quickly show you See how it's cut on the inside. So let me grab another piece of brass so I can give you a comparison. So there you got it. Definitely a little bit more cut in. All right, that's the inside of the case mouth. Now important the outside because that's the part that touches the gun. So we just run it like that. Excuse the airplane. There we go. And then I just give it a feel to feel if there's any impurities there. If there's anything there, just give it a little bit of more, you know, just make sure that it's nice and smooth. And there we go. So now you can see that it's been chamfered and deburred. See if I can give you, there we go. And I'll grab the other piece of brass just to give you the comparison between the two. You can see it's nice. It almost looks like you've sharpened it, but it's nice and clean. So for your bullet that you put in as well as your chamber. And there you go, guys complete steps you are now 
completely ready to load. And there you have it guys, brass prep in a nutshell. So it's the same system over and over. Remember, consistency is key. Eric Cortina in one of his videos said, if you want consistent accuracy, you need to do the same thing over and over and over. Consistency is key. Guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you learned something. If you do have any questions, don't hesitate to send me a comment in the section below. I'll get back to you or hit me up on social media and I'll help you out where I can. Please consider subscribing and we'll see you for the next video. Goodbye.